Markets are dynamic, evolving, adapting and changing all around us every day. And whatever the product or service, the market is the space where buyers and sellers come together and interact. Now this interaction can be personal, face to face, over the telephone, fax, the internet, through advertisements and through many other means of communication. The purpose of this interaction is to determine prices and exchange goods and services. We've looked at demand and then supply separately in order to understand their function. But of course, in the real world, buyers can't determine prices on their own and neither can sellers. They come together and negotiate in the market. We're now going to look at the market model which will give us a more realistic understanding of how the economy works. The market model takes the two parties we've looked at so far, the buyers represented by the demand curve and the sellers represented by the supply curve, and puts them together. This model will show us how the interaction of the forces of supply and demand determine the equilibrium price of a product and the equilibrium quantity. So, we have another tool to help us understand how economies work, and this one will eventually be able to show us how those key economic questions, what to produce, how to produce, and for whom, are answered by markets. To illustrate how prices are determined in a market, we'll take our good old fried chicken example and compare the market demand and market supply. In the first column, we have the different prices for fried chicken. In the second column, the quantity demanded at those different prices. And in the third column, the quantity supplied. Now, somewhere in this table, we'll find our dream position, a point where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. It's clearly not at a price of seven rand, there, the market demand is 1,200 pieces, but the quantity supplied is 4,800. It's also not at 2 rand, where demand is 4,200 pieces and the quantity supplied only 1,800. But, at a price of 4 rand, the quantity demanded is 3,000 pieces and the quantity supplied is also 3,000 pieces. Yes, at a price of 4 rands, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. And this position is known as market equilibrium. In this case, the equilibrium price is 4 rand, and the equilibrium quantity demanded and supplied is 3,000. This market equilibrium position indicates that no market participant has any reason to change his or her behaviour. Buyers and sellers are happy to trade at that price and there are no further pressures on prices and quantities in the market to change. The plans of the buyers exactly match the plans of the sellers. At any other price, the market is in disequilibrium, meaning that some of the market participants are frustrated in their plans and will change their behaviour. Pressure on the market to change exists when it is out of equilibrium. Apart from the equilibrium at a price of 4 rand, See if you can work out what's happening at some of the other prices. Who will be the frustrated market participant in each case, the buyer or seller? If we take the market at 6 rand, the quantity supplied is 4,200 pieces. But buyers only want 1,800 pieces, so there's more than is needed to meet their needs. They're not bothered, but the producers, who hope to sell all 4,200 pieces, are in a spot because the market is only taking 1,800. We have what's called an excess supply in the market. The excess supply is the difference between what they plan to sell and what consumers actually bought. In this case, 2,400 pieces of fried chicken. The last thing we want to do is throw away the 2,400 pieces of chicken. So what can we do as suppliers to cut our losses and sell more chicken? Well, the first and most obvious course of action is to lower the price, to try and lure buyers back to consume more. As all the suppliers in the market are in the same boat, 
Sooner or later, they'll all do the same thing, or suffer further losses. A drop in price will cause an increase in the quantity demanded. Customers will want more. Now, what's happening in the market is that downward pressure is being exerted on the price. Suppliers are competing with one another to sell more fried chicken, and they do that most often by lowering their prices. And this downward pressure will continue until market equilibrium is reached at a price of four rand and at an equilibrium quantity of 3,000 pieces. At this point, the plans of buyers exactly match the plans of sellers. At one rand, the quantity demanded is 4,800, but the quantity supplied is only 1,200 pieces. So the buyers are frustrated. They'd like to buy 4,800 pieces, but the suppliers are only prepared to produce 1,200 pieces at that price. This is what economists call excess demand, and it's equal to the difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. So, 4,800 minus 1,200 is equal to 3,600. So an excess demand of 3,600 pieces of fried chicken exists in the market. In this case, it is the buyers who now compete with one another, trying to get hold of more chicken. Upward pressure continues to drive prices up until market equilibrium is reached at a price of four rand, where demand and supply are equal. From our discussion so far, we can conclude that at a price higher than the equilibrium price, an excess supply exists in the market. And this will sooner or later put in motion forces that exert a downward pressure on prices. But at a price lower than the equilibrium price, an excess demand exists. And this will start an upward pressure on prices in the market. We can see that there are forces that will always push this market towards equilibrium. And when that is reached, the pressure relaxes. The market naturally seeks its own equilibrium. As we've done before, we can now use this table to analyze the behavior of the market demand and supply curves.